Hey guys, how's it going and welcome back to another episode. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about the differences between life in Mexico and life in the USA. Now, before we get into it, I want to let you guys know where we're at. We're in the center of Merida, Yucatan in Mexico. Merida is the capital of the Yucatan state okay in the yucatan peninsula in mexico i know it's a mouthful but for some of you guys that know the area um we're going to give you a walking tour of its central and we're going to walk all the way to paseo montejo now if you guys were around last week in last week's episode we walked all the way from the neighborhood of la ermita all the way here to el centro where we are right now and so now we're going to continue from walking from its central all the way to Paseo Montejo, which is further north. So if you want to see the full walk, I encourage you guys to watch last week's episode and then continue watching this episode. If you guys were here last week, welcome back. Let's continue our walk as uh, we walk from now the center of the city all the way to Paseo Montejo, which is, you know, just a little further north of here, about, you know, 30 minute walk, give or take, depending on how many detours I decide to take on the way up there. Now, let's just get right into it. In this episode, we're just going to be comparing, you know, differences, you know, that I've noticed in, uh, you know, from living out here over five years in Mexico. So one of the things is uh, there's no homeless people. You notice that there's no homeless problem. Sure, in many of my videos, you're gonna see tons of neighborhoods, tons of people that are very poor, um, working very hard to make ends meet and uh, do their thing. That's why a lot of people get confused and think that you know Mexico is uh, still a third world country, which it is not. But I digress. Um, in Mexico, um, there's really no homeless people. Everyone has some sort of a home. Or that issue is not really a problem. Now, sure, granted, the government itself doesn't really provide much help or much, you know, kind of resources at all to its people. And that's why a lot of Mexicans complain about how, you know, crappy the government is out here because they really don't do much for the people. In fact, it is the complete opposite of what it would be in the USA, where in the USA, for whatever reason, you know, there's a massive homeless problem. The problem was very bad over five years ago when I left. I can't imagine how horrible and bad it is today. In fact, some of you guys are probably watching me right now while you're living in your tent or in your car or you know in or on a couch or in some sort of situation like that and you don't even have your own roof you know meaning that you either share a house you know with a bunch of people you live in a room um, you can barely make ends meet on your own if you have your own place um, and so on and so forth and so um, most of you guys know the struggles and difficulties of uh, what it is to live in the USA but in the USA you know you guys know you guys are very blessed in the sense of uh, you have all the resources in the world right you live in the richest country in the world and therefore you know you have a lot of resources that most countries just don't have for example you know again if you're poor living on the street or you're just poor you get these things called food stamps you might even get certain benefits and get um, just straight cash you know from the government um, you might even get um, health insurance and I can go on and on you know there there's a bunch of programs that a lot of people can sign up for and take advantage of while they're living in the USA um, in order for them to get back on their feet and for a lot of people that are able to use some of these resources you know they're able to get a chance you know um, where they might not have e ever been able to um, just because of the their financial uh, situation they were born in or what have you and so a lot of people out there um, think you know just because again uh, the USA has all these programs the USA is the richest country in the world and I can go on and on that again there's no homeless problem and the reality is, is it couldn't be any further from the truth again look at the humongous homeless problem that there is in the USA and yet you don't see any homeless people here in fact you don't see any homeless people in most of Mexico and uh, again just keep going further you don't really see any homeless people in most of the world uh, I'm not saying that it don't they don't exist and that they're not out there uh, but it's a very different thing so in Mexico for example when it comes to like housing um, 
they give that to you. They give you that right. In fact, most Mexicans, you know, um, have the right of housing, you know, in one shape, form or another. You know, um, I don't want to get super detailed here um, you know, because that's not what this episode's about. We're just trying to, you know, make talk about observations that I've made, you know, since I've been living here. But when it comes to housing, you know, no matter how poor you are, you know, at the very least, the government makes sure you know that you have a roof over your head again um you can work very hard to get a nice roof or at the very least uh you can build your own roof and uh you know just get yourself a plot of land and before you know it you're good to go and uh you know again it, it, i don't want to oversimplify things here but the reality is is that you know most people out here might not have any kind of help from the government but it doesn't really matter because the reality is is that you know as long as you have housing and you have the ability to you know work you have the ability to start your own business you have the ability to do many things well then guess what you know what i mean you will be able to succeed and that's one thing i realized when i was in the usa is that is that there's no real um housing you know what i mean there's no real ability to have housing and so you know a lot of people just have become homeless because of their situation and it kind of sucks because the reality is is that um when you kind of are in that situation you know of becoming very poor and having to live out of your car and all that stuff you realize how difficult it is to actually maintain a job i mean think about how difficult it is already in order to live your life and maintain a, a job and a decent living and all that good stuff um well imagine that all of a sudden now you don't have a roof you don't have a bed you don't have a shower you don't have all these things that most of us take uh, granted for and i'm um, out here you know the poorest of the poor individuals at the very least has a little bit of a roof you know to save them from the elements that belongs to them um they have you know the ability to sleep whether it might be uncomfortable or not that's another story um they have the ability to again take a shower get you know say have their clothes keep their stuff in very safe environment in a sense um so they can go on to their daily life you know um whether they work for somebody or work for themselves until eventually they work hard enough to get themselves out of that hole and they do it all without any kind of help or intervention from the government as opposed to where in the usa you know again you, you get all this help from the government but at the same time you know what i mean again it makes it very difficult for you to even get a job or maintain a job because of all these other things you can't even start your own little business because again there's just so many barriers to entry and and things you know become so difficult again if you are a felon you know or you have some sort of criminal record that you know again to no fault of your own there's a lot of people that you know have a criminal record just for you know having taken a, a drunk piss under a tree um you know uh when they were 17 and all of a sudden now because of that you know they can't get a job or a decent job and you know i could go on and on and so um and let alone start a business you know with all the barriers to entry so the reality is is that the housing situation in mexico is very different than it is in the usa and um even again the reason you don't see homeless as well is that you know again we already know what the rents are are you know and how cheap they are so again imagine you uh, are, are just trying to score a 300 400 500 dollar rent and uh, the typical mexican you know that is poor working class um they you know that rent is way too much the typical mexican working class you know uh person um single person you know their rent is probably you know a hundred dollars or less you know whether they can simply afford a room to rent an apartment to rent or you know again beyond you know where they can maybe get something a little bigger but again if you're renting a room it's what 50 bucks a month you know if you're renting a, an apartment what it's a few thousand pesos a month you know what i mean like again like a hundred dollars a month a hundred fifty dollars a month give or take you know you might be living very poor and in squalor but you got your own place and you're gonna tell me you can't afford rent again even the worst job out there is gonna pay you um three thousand pesos four thousand pesos you know um you know uh, every two weeks you know and uh, that's enough for rent especially if your rent is half of that so you can a typical mexican even the poorest of poor mexicans um they can pay their rent with about one week's work so that allows a lot of mexicans no matter how poor they are allows them to really be able to you know um lift up and have uh, a better quality of life and um, have more opportunity and i can go on and on because they are not worried 
constantly about rent and about all these insurances and about all these extra bills that a typical American might have. Where again, in the USA, no matter how poor you are, you gotta have insurances. You know, again, I say insurances because it might be in car insurance, health insurance, um, you know, other kinds of insurance that you're gonna need. Um, you know, again, most people cannot afford a home. They can't get a mortgage, but they, you know, um, what's offered to them is a rent that is two to three to four times as expensive or more expensive than a mortgage. So again, they, they can't even get a home. They can't even apply for a mortgage, which is again, horrible in itself. But again, um, a lot of people, if they were to get a mortgage, all of a sudden their housing situation is fixed because they have a house and their rent is a lot cheaper than if they were to actually rent a place. And I could go on and on. And so the housing situation in the USA is not only out of hand and extremely expensive, but you know, for most people, you know, they don't even get to have their own home. You know, most people at the very least, you know, they, they, you know they'll be lucky if they get a corner of the street and they get to live in a tent on the street or live in a car if they're lucky or again you know you already know what the housing situation is like out there so mexico is very 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 different and uh you know not only that but again you know a lot of people talk to me about the housing situation out here one thing that i also noticed is that when i rented for the first time you know again i, I didn't have thing okay so you know when you're in the usa and you rent the place and all of a sudden you got to get the light bill in your name you got to get the water bill in your name you got to get all these things in your name and if uh, your credit or certain things you know are not you know in your favor well then you can't get these things either so not only can you not get a, a place to rent but you can't even get the utilities well mexico's not like that at all you know you rent a home you're renting a, an apartment you're renting anything um you don't got to worry about the utilities because those utilities are in the name of the owner so basically all you got to do is um move in and every couple months you'll get a water bill you'll get a light bill and these bills will be in the name of the owner and then you just simply go pay it if you don't pay it then you have no water no electricity it's as simple as that no no worries and uh, the owner doesn't care if you don't pay it because it's just going to come out of your deposit and he'll kick you out but the end of the day is what i'm saying is that you know even when you're moving when you got to find a place to live and all that other stuff is not that difficult really you know, even as a foreigner you're coming out here with a travel visa you know uh some sort of tourist visa um you got nothing to worry about because all they care about is again just your id you know your visa and money <laughs> that's it because everything else um is taken care of and then you don't have to worry about these things either you know uh because again you, you're coming out here you're again on a tourist visa for crying out loud uh, you know um you might even be on a temporary or permanent visa but still it's difficult to get a lot of these things in, in many cases even in the u.s imagine here um so the point i'm trying to make is that when you're renting out here whether it's you or just another mexican you know renting from another mexican um they don't got to worry about the light bill they don't got to worry about the water bill they, they don't got to worry about these bills the only thing they got to worry about that they would put in their name would be the internet bill the phone bill things like that which again you know you're probably going to do that anyway and then those things always belong in your name anyway but when it comes to other things like that that's one welcome change that i, I saw was awesome you know where you know um the barrier to entry to rent a place was very low very minimal for most people and um I know some people that are watching this video are going to say, well, in Mexico City or in this part of Mexico, it's not like that. It's just like the USA. Yeah, you're right. In some parts of Mexico, they are just like the USA. But in like 85%, 90% of Mexico, it's not. In fact, in most Mexico, they don't even care about your ID. They don't care about nothing. You just pay money and you're good to go. But yeah, look, at the end of the day, guys, and I mean, that's like another situation. I mean, just the whole housing situation, how all that is just taken care of is very different. Uh, work is very different. You know, even if you're a person that cannot find a job or hold a job for whatever reason, anyone and everyone for the most part is some sort of an entrepreneur out here um you know many people have a job and then they got a side gig or side hustle which is like their own business and that can vary greatly depending on the individual and and so many other factors but again that's also another big part of life out here where you know a lot of people out there you know again they are able to do whatever they want when it comes to making money you know what I mean? A lot of things, you know, um, are more accessible to
to people out here when it comes to that. The rules, the regulations, the laws, all these things, you know, they're not as hardcore as they are in the USA. Um, you know, again, the police with the authority figures, the government officials, you know, when it comes to so many, you know, of these things, the enforcement of these things, and that can go on and on, are very relaxed and compared to how they are in the USA and so on and so forth. And, uh, you know, it just makes life so much easier. Um, and again, I've made many videos, you know, going more detailed on that. But again, just the ability to make money. Sure, you're not making maybe as much money on your typical job out here in Mexico compared to the USA. But when it just comes to just a straight up ability to make money, you know, like, wow. You know, the ability to make money out here in Mexico. Um, if you are a entrepreneur, if you are a true business person, if you are a go-getter, the opportunities are endless out here. Again, you know, it's money, trees, you know, money falling from the sky. Again, you got to know, you know, how to grab it. You got to know how to deal with it. You got to know how to, you know, um, make it happen. But again, you know, there's a lot of Mexicans that, again, are very crafty and uh, they know how to survive in very rough times. Um, so now that things are way better, oh my God, you know what I mean? They're making a killing out there, for lack of a better description. And the same thing for a lot of foreigners and a lot of people that can come out here and take advantage of that. But you know, that's another thing, too. You know, the economy is changing greatly, where the economy out here in Mexico is just constantly improving, as opposed to where in the USA, it is going in the complete opposite direction. You know, I moved to Mexico, again, over five years ago, and I've seen the changes, you know, have been pretty dramatic. And I've also become more educated on, you know, what it, what, what it is to live in Mexico, you know, what the typical Mexican um, you know, has lived through in the last, you know, several decades and so on and so forth. And so um, as an American, I know what we've lived through in the USA the last several decades and, and so on and so forth. So, you know, right now seeing things just go in two opposite directions is a, is a major, major reality of living out here where you're seeing Mexico is, in, you know, just constantly growing and getting better and getting richer and having more opportunities and getting more expensive in some cases, you know, depending on who you ask and uh, so on and so forth. Where in the USA, it's the complete opposite. You know, again, yes, it's also getting extremely expensive, way more expensive, but there's less opportunity. There's uh, less to go around. Things are getting tougher, more difficult. So that is also a true reality of it. Now, I, you know, a lot of people can argue out there in the audience as to what is causing a lot of this stuff and, you know, you know, what has prevented certain things from happening and certain things from happening and so on and so forth. But one main component is that in Mexico, you know, there's still a very strong family structure, a very strong religious structure. And so, you know, uh, depending on who you ask, you know, well, they will let you know how conservative they are. Even the most liberal person in Mexico um, is, is very, very conservative. And what do I mean by conservatism? Well, again, you know, just family values and morals and, you know, just all that stuff. You know, I mean, I don't want to get too detailed on that again. I don't want to polarize the audience too much out there. Um, but the reality is, is that, you know, that is another welcome change for me and so many people out there as to where, you know, uh, in Mexico, they still put family first. A lot of people have a lot of emphasis on not just having a family, but taking care of their own family. And that can go on and on. And, you know, family is very important. Religion is important. And again, it doesn't have to mean that you or the people are religious per se, but just the values that come from religion you know, um, are very important still, and they're still upheld out here. So, you know, ju just uh, the simple values, you know, that come from that, you know, have has helped, you know, kind of keep this whole society glued together, despite all the hard times, all the hardships that has been dealing with in the last several decades. And, uh, and now as it's uh, coming out of it, you know, as it's uh, now entering this golden period, um, these values are still very strong and, you know, still very important when it comes to everyday Mexican life. And, uh, you know, things in Mexico uh, are just have a, a very different importance uh, than they do in the USA. Out here in Mexico, they um, emphasize a lot, you know, on, you know, living life, on having uh, parties, on enjoying life, 
on, you know, like for example, you know, during the summer, there's barbecues or there's, you know, events every other weekend. You know, you're going to the beach, you're going to someone's pool, you're doing something, you know, or everything, you know, basically every single week. When it comes Christmas time, you know, so many people just celebrate and it's just a constant thing. You know, they prioritize quality of life. You know, they put in charge number one you know family and family oriented things um over work over you know other things that just don't really seem to matter um in the grand scheme of things which is a very welcome you know change you know uh, coming from the usa where it's all about productivity work 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 um you know how much you can produce how much you can make how much you can have and do and create and those other stuff and as opposed to putting major importance in quality of life and just family and all the really important things that all of us should be putting uh, more time and effort into. Another really interesting difference that I noticed about people living in Mexico as opposed to people living in the USA and just the culture and the life has been the fact that a lot of Mexicans, you know, a lot of Mexicans, uh, they don't know how free they actually are. Now, granted, a lot of Mexicans, you know, thank goodness, you know, um, a lot of Mexicans actually know how free they actually are. And trust me, they, you know, they, they uphold their freedoms and, you know, they, they make sure that their freedoms are upheld and they defend their rights and they're very well versed on their rights and their freedoms and so on and so forth. So, you know, again, shout out to them. Big uh, congratulations to Mexican society um, for, you know, again, knowing they're free. But as you guys know, there's a lot of people out there that don't know how free they actually are. And um, that's just the reality of life out here in Mexico, where a lot of Mexicans think that, that there's more freedom, like living in a place like Canada, the USA, or, or Europe, as opposed to life out here. Um, and, and the same thing goes with a typical American, you know, a typical American out there, you ask them, you know, about life in the USA and they'll tell you, yeah, you know, things kind of suck right now, but they're still better than living in Mexico or better than living in, you know, any other part of the world. You know, um, the USA is the freest in the world. I, I am the freest. I have the most freedom living in the USA. So you're going to hear a lot of Americans, you know, that again, they're under the impression that they are very free when that couldn't be any further from the truth and same thing as in mexico where a lot of them think that they are very oppressed when it couldn't be any further from the truth I, I think that the typical american in the usa is extremely oppressed and live in a tyrannical uh government you know under a tyrannical government and in mexico is a complete opposite where it is extremely free and um, most people out here um, do not live under any kind of government structure at all. And um, they actually have no idea what freedom is. Again, we've talked about this also in other episodes where we talk about the difference between freedom and comfort. And so just people always get those two confused, you know, freedom and comfort. And so, yeah, you know what I mean? I'm out here just trying to, you know, make sure that people realize that those two things are extremely different and um i think a lot of you guys in the audience understand this and get this but i think a lot of people out there you know again in both cultures get them very confused um you know again it's just very interesting uh, just to see it all in play on a daily basis once you're living out here all right guys i know i've been babbling a lot in this episode um but i forgot to mention that you know we are now here in parque santana I, at some point i showed you the church I, I walked around the park a little bit around this area of uh, the parque santana which is right like a block away from paseo montejo um i'm going to be showing you um you know one of the first places i came to eat in Merida when I first moved out here um, you know show you my friend and uh, you know a place that if you're coming out here for the first time I really 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 recommend that you go visit um, again it, it just goes to show how nice the people are out here I remember when I first came out here and I barely had you know money to get out here and they fed me they took care of me and they were very nice to me and ever since then every time I'm in the area and they see me you know they say hi I come say hi they never forget about me i never forget about them and uh you know just makes me very happy um you know to always come through here and just say hi um but anyways yeah if you're ever in the area um whether you live here or you're visiting here come check out this area which is again it's a very touristy area but i highly recommend it if you want to get a, a true taste 
of the food out here and the cuisine out here and to what a, a typical Yucatecan eats on a daily basis and how they live and so on and so forth. So I highly recommend you come check this uh, little area out here of uh, Parque Santa Ana um, that's right by Paseo Montejo. Now, speaking of food, another welcome thing, you know, about living out here in Mexico is the food quality. How amazingly fresh it is, you know, how amazingly organic it is and so on and so forth. As, a, as opposed to in the USA, um, where in the USA, don't get me started on the food and don't get me started on all the chemicals. Don't get me started on all that stuff. You know what I mean? Everything from what they add to the meat, to the vegetables and everything in between in order for those products, you know, to last longer on the shelf and for you to eat it um, in a timely fashion. But anyways, out here, things are very different. One thing I noticed right away was when I would do groceries and buy things, um, I, I was just used to the USA where, you know, you make a trip, you know, once a week, give or take, and you buy a lot of the things that you're gonna use throughout the week and they last a long time. Well, out here, since things are you know not made the same way um you'll buy carrots you know um you'll buy you know any kind of fruits or vegetables and you'll see how quickly they turn how quickly they go bad you know when you buy bread when you buy so many things um you know it, it's just very fresh the butcher where i go get my meat for example um those animals you know were recently slaughtered you know not too long before i and other customers you know get it um so that's just the reality of it you know what i mean it's so crazy fresh and that's like a welcome welcome thing you know as opposed to in the usa where you know the fresher the meat the fresher the vegetables the fresher you know all your things the more organic you want your things you know more expensive it is in fact the more you want your food to actually resemble real food the more expensive it is and out here it's a complete opposite you know where things that have chemicals things that are you know come from another country with gmos and all this other stuff you know and all these other chem you know whatever all the you know all that stuff that makes the food you know in the usa so i don't know special um well those things are lacking out here and so the reality is is that most of the stuff is just locally sourced you know you're gonna get it from the local farmer from the local uh butcher and so on and so forth and uh and of course you can go to the grocery store i go to the grocery store a lot of the things i buy are in the grocery store but when it just comes to like the meat and the fruits and the vegetables that i eat basically every single day i get them locally locally sourced you know from local farmers local butchers and uh my goodness you know it makes such a monster difference the food out here just by default is just so much healthier and so much better you literally have to go out of your way to eat things that are not healthy and are extremely bad for you um so yes that's a major major difference you know we're out in the usa you're constantly eating garbage you know just that's all there is you know to eat for the most part and it's very very expensive to eat food that is actually good for you and healthy for you um where here it's a complete opposite you know it's like most of the food that you're gonna eat you're gonna find is extremely healthy for you and you have to go way out of your way to eat something that's not healthy for you so that's a major major component you know to life out here that's a big difference as well you know where again not only is your quality of life increased because you're eating more delicious food but you know also you're getting healthier you're less sick and you know all these things also improve your quality of life and speaking of getting sick again you know access to health care out here is a lot better than it is in the usa in the usa i could barely afford to get any kind of medicine let alone see a doctor it's just so crazy expensive and you know out of reach for the typical american but out here in mexico it's a complete opposite you know again i've talked about it multiple times you can see a doctor for as little as three dollars and medicine is extremely inexpensive compared to what you're going to find back in the usa so again access to healthcare is like a major component not just access to healthcare, you know but the fact that you have access to tons of different kinds of healthcare. so again better food quality you know um better health care um more access to both of those things as opposed to in the usa where both of those things are you know again only for a few you know, another thing about Mexico is the fact that it's very cash only. You know, we've talked about it many times out here um, in this channel, but the reality is, is that, you know, Mexico's a very, very cash only society. Um, sure, you know, they have, you know, uh, digital payments, you know, um, bank cards, banking, digital banking, digital payments, the whole thing, it all exists. But the reality is, is that the way that this country is uh, set up, their infrastructure set up, when it comes to 
you know, the banking system, the tax system, and so many other things like that. Um, most Mexicans, just because of uh, the way the system has been set up, they have been forced in a way to function in a cash-only society and function uh, and with many informal businesses, you know, all across the nation. And so because of that, it sets up a completely different set of rules and a completely different economical system than what we have in the USA. And so in the USA, it's a more and more difficult each and every day to not just pay with cash but to just have cash and use cash on a regular basis uh, you know outside of a few cities out there where you know it's very cash heavy like Miami um, but for the most part it's all digital these days and everything is just digital and uh, you know that's a big difference out here as well you know where because of things like that again you know it makes sure that you know the whole sovereignty of the individual is protected i don't want to get into that i've talked about that multiple times in other videos as well but that's also a major major component of uh, life out here that i not only saw but um but in, you know again thoroughly enjoyed the fact that you know most mexicans out here are not tied down to the government system the grid the banking system and so on and so forth you know most mexicans function in a completely separate economy to the actual economy and so that's why even in like uh, the gdp numbers and official government numbers you're never going to really see the actual truth there and that's simply because you know like 70 percent or more of the actual mexican economy is falls into the informal business category which again includes mostly cash and so you know it, it's a very intertwined uh, situation there um which has its pluses and negatives but the reality is is that mexico is a very huge cash only society and it's not going to be changing anytime soon and um, if there is an economic crisis, you know, which we are already pretty much witnessing, you know, that's happening around the world these days, um, once that does actually does happen, then guess what? You know, Mexico is going to be in a very good spot, in a good position, because again, you know, when it comes to things like uh, just the education of the typical Mexican, when it comes to the economy and money they know the difference between money and currency um, they hold a lot of value in things like gold and silver and property and all this other stuff and so you know the reality is, is that most Mexicans no matter how poorly educated they are they're very well versed on these things when it comes to the economy so no matter what happens um, Mexico is gonna be you know saved and they're not really gonna fall very hard when this actually happens, you know, later on in the future when we're gonna have this humongous economic crisis all around the world that again, we are already seeing. Um, Mexico's already well protected because it all comes down to education at the end of the day and most Mexicans are extremely educated on the subject. Not just this subject, but they're educated on other subjects. And uh, that's another welcome surprise. You know, most Mexicans are a lot more educated and a lot smarter um, than the typical American. I was thoroughly surprised um, as to seeing, you know, so many people, no matter what their income level, no matter what they did, um, no matter who they were, how thoroughly educated they were and how smart they were and how well versed they were on so many topics and the ability to you know have a conversation with a typical Mexican about just about any topic um, was a welcome surprise to me as you know I love to talk and I love to have conversations so imagine my glee when I came to Mexico and um, not only did people love to talk as well but they were very well versed on many topics and uh, yeah you know that was very very awesome and welcome well, with all that being said, we're already making our way towards the end of the episode here. I really hope you guys enjoyed today's walk. I really hope you guys enjoyed last week's walk. I really hope you guys enjoyed the complete walk where, again, we walked all the way from La Ermita neighborhood in the south of the center of the city, in its centro, um, all the way to the center of the city, all the way to where we are now, which is, you know, no, the middle part of uh, Paseo Montejo. We walked over an hour and a half, give or take, um, and you guys listened to me um, and watched the whole time, you know, while we were doing this, uh, you know, uh, walking and talking video. But anyways, I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video, and if you guys did enjoy today's video, then please don't forget to like, subscribe, share, hit the bell icon, but more importantly than anything else, 
please stay awesome. I really hope that you guys, you know, enjoy these walks and talks as much as I love making them for you. Now, um, if we haven't gotten there already, we should be approaching El Lados Colón, which again, little trivia for those of you guys that don't know, this is the place where I met Christian. You know, this is our first date and uh, it's a very, you know, a special place for us. Um, there's a few of these places in town but this is the main one that we met and fell in love in so if you guys are ever out here in the area you guys can come out here and enjoy some of the best ice cream in the city and at the same time hang out exactly where me and christian hung out on our first date and uh enjoyed our first ice cream together so thanks again for watching guys i'll see you guys on the next one bye guys